welcome everybody uh, to another little Saturday night chat. Uh, Father Brian Short all with you and uh, I am here in uh, the house in Halston Street which is 500 metres across the road from the National Shrine for St. Pio in uh, Church Street and uh, it is um, always lovely to chat to you and I just want to once again say how much I appreciate this opportunity from our friends in Padre Pio TV, uh, who, um, in fairness, like they are um, making some wonderful programs in the Italian language, but they approached us and said, could we make some uh, little programs, short programs for the English speaking spiritual children of Padre Pio or the English speaking pilgrims, friends of St. Pio. And they are not, you are not. Uh, whether you speak English or whether you speak Italian or whether you speak any other language. Uh, there are many of you and uh, so many people out there who are not just literally, you know, in the last few years, uh, spiritual children of Padre Pio, but of course the spiritual child of Padre Pio goes right back to Pope Pius XII. Uh, Pope Pius XII was Pope from 1939 to 1958. Pope from... Um, as they say, right through the, the Second World War years and right up into the 1950s to 1958. And in fact, I happen to have here something very, very precious and very special, which I got, I had a loan of. And it is the Zucchetto, or the skull cap of Pope Pius XII. One of the skull caps of Pope Pius XII. Uh, and he wore that. And uh, there's a tradition, of course. I, I, I went in... Uh, to a clerical outfitters one time and uh, they were selling you know clerical shirts and clerical uh, collars and so on it was here in Dublin actually and it's closed since um, now everything everything is bought online and so on but I remember in the in the in the cabinet in the center of the shop was uh, some zucchettos bishops zucchettos and a cardinal's um, skull cap a cardinal's uh, biretta and then there was a white one, or a, or a washed linen ivory one. And I said, do you mind me asking, I said, when, when would the Pope come here to buy a zucchetto? And they said, well, that's where you're wrong. People buy them and get them in, uh, in, 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 in shops like this, and the, they're, they're going on pilgrimage to Rome. And if they have an audience with the Pope, the Pope will take his one off and put their one on and then put his one back on. So therefore, you have a kind of a relic. So that's, I say, what the late Holy Father, Pope Pius XII, did. And so people have, and many people have the zucchetto of the late Pope. So there you go. A little blessing for you all through the prayers of Saint of Pope Pius XII. The next Pope after Pius XII, of course, dear friends, was um, Pope John XXIII, Saint John XXIII. He was canonized with, um, with Pope John Paul II. And John XXIII was, of course... Uh, not a very tall man, but he was quite a large man. Um, and he had been uh, nuncio in uh, Bulgaria and then in Turkey. And then finally, he was the nuncio to France. Um, he was then uh, appointed as Cardinal Patriarch of Venice or Archbishop of Venice. And that's where he found himself going to the conclave in 1958 that elected him Pope. And he took the name John the Twenty Third, And he was... A, a joyful, happy, content man. He didn't have great health, but he caused a, a, a pastoral earthquake by calling a council, the Second Vatican Council, which went from 1962, from 1962 to 1965. He died just before the end of the council, and the, 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 his successor, Pope Paul VI, now Saint Paul VI, canonized recently by, or at least in the last while, by Pope Francis. Uh, Pope Paul VI completed the council, although the council, in a sense, the wonderful reforms of the council continue to this day. Um, but John XXIII was someone who really was, uh, you know, so childlike and so humorous and so happy. Somebody said to him, how many people work in the Vatican you're holding this? He said, about half them. Another great story was the time that President Kennedy and First Lady Jacqueline Kennedy came 
on pilgrimage to Rome and they had a, 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 an audience with Pope John XXIII in the Vatican. And Pope John was wondering, like, what will I call her? What, what, like, okay, you know, Holy Father, you, you refer to the, the, the president as Mr. President and you refer to the, to, the, to the wife of the president as First Lady. And he was trying to remember this because he didn't speak, he didn't speak English very well, I don't think. He had, he had French and he had other languages. I don't think his English was completely excellent. But he was managing fine and people would understand him. But he eventually, the president and his retinue and his, his party arrived and President and Mrs. Kennedy were shown in to meet Pope John. And he was trying to remember the protocol and it just slipped out. All of a sudden, the whole thing just, he said, and this is Mr. President, President Kennedy. And there was greetings. And then Jacqueline stood in front of the Pope and he goes, ah, Jacqueline. So <laughs> there was a lot of uh, people kind of going, but I mean, Mrs. Kennedy, Jackie Kennedy was so happy because of course, both of them were Catholic. So they were thrilled and, and uh, what a wonderful childlike, simple story about Pope John the 23rd. There are many other stories about you know, St. Pope John XXIII. Paul VI was the next Pope. He was Pope from 1963, 1965, should I say, to, uh, uh, to 1978. And uh, he brought in the reforms of the Second Vatican Council. He was the Pope that traveled. He was the first Pope to travel outside of the Vatican. He was also the first Pope to travel in an airplane. And he was the Pope that thawed the great schism if you like in many, many ways he kind of he tried to kind of bridge bridge the gap between west and east pope as you know is the patriarch of the west he's the vicar of jesus christ on earth he's the supreme pontiff he has all these different titles but he tried to bridge the gap between east and west and of course he met with patriarch athenagoras who was of course the greek orthodox patriarch patriarch of the east and they, they both met and they embraced and they referred to each other as brother. So there has been great strides in ecumenism. He also met Archbishop Ramsey, the Church of England Archbishop, the Archbishop of Canterbury. And he also was someone who, uh, you know, really uh, tried to bridge the gap as well uh, between Rome and Canterbury, Rome and Constantinople. So we pray that all may be one, as we've just passed in these in the last couple of weeks, the work week of prayer, week of prayer for Christian unity. We continue to pray that all may be one. The last little story I have before I finish, and I'll continue next time about some of the popes I, I, I have a lot of love for and respect for. But the last little story I have very quickly is told by Peter Hebblethwaite. When Paul VI was uh, a, a nuncio and when he was working in, 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 uh, in, uh, in Europe, he, um, he bought a Polish alarm clock. And the Polish alarm clock kept perfect time and every morning it woke him up. And when Pope Paul was dying, when he lay dying in August 1978, uh, just as he drew his last breath, the story goes that the Polish alarm clock went off. Now, of course, the successor of Paul VI was John Paul I, Cardinal Luciani, but he didn't last very long as we know. He died quite prematurely 30 days later. We talk about that again. But the Polish Cardinal Wojtyła, who eventually became John Paul II, of course, we now know he became the Pope uh, in October 1978. And the Polish alarm clock certainly did go off. Until next time, dear friends, thank you very, very much. We'll give you a little blessing before we go with the relic of Pope Pius XII. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.